It's like if Scott Pilgrim and Gurren Lagan had a magical girl baby. Hey everybody and welcome to the next episode of Mini Impressions. This time I'm taking a look at the first episode of Kill La Kill by the director and writers of Gurren Lagan. Uh, by, I'm pretty sure the same animation team, but I'm not positive, so don't quote me. I'm, it's, I think it's a group that used to be in Gainax, but they're called Trigger, and my god, this is, this was one hell of a first episode. For those of you who haven't really been in the know about this, this show has been so hyped over, over the past, like, for a while now. It's been really hyped, like, really, really just... Everyone's like, oh my god, this is going to be so great. I'm, I don't think anyone's expecting it to be an intelligent anime. I think they're just expecting, holy crap, there's another Guren Lagan coming. And that's pretty much what this feels like. This feels exactly like it. It's not a smart show, at least from where we're at in episode one. It's not smart. It's full of dumb, funny, awesome action scenes, very good humor. It's It's got all the same type of things that Guren Lagan had that was enjoyable about it. That being said, it does also have a bit of the slutty costume designs and whatnot, like Yoko's outfit was. The show starts off really cool because it starts off with a normal classroom setting and all of a sudden the door just gets kicked down and in comes the leader of the disciplinary committee and this guy takes his job way too seriously. Everyone on the whole committee takes their job seriously. Like the student council president, all of the leaders of the clubs and everything, they all take it like life situations. So at the Hanoji uh, Academy, there's these uniforms called Goku uniforms that are given out to all these high elite members. They're ranked by stars. I'm pretty sure there's one star, two star, three star, maybe even a four star for the president. I'm not sure what her ranking is. But as the stars get higher, the suits give more power to the person. Like more just all around physical power. This guy steals one of the uh, one star uniforms and gets attacked by the disciplinary committee who is a three-star uniform wearing guy, and he beats the crap out of him. He even kills him. This is a school where this is allowed, apparently. We then cut to Ryuko, who's the main character of the show. She's the one that's been featured throughout all the stuff with the bluish hair with, like, the red streak and everything, always giving the very serious look. I gotta say, from all the stuff that I'd, se I'd seen before going into this first episode, she looked like she was going to be a very serious-toned character. Like, she's not gonna have, like, any humorous sides or any other sides to her. She's gonna be, like, uh, she always looked, she gave the look of a quiet badass. Good thing is, she is not. She is not. She is hilarious, yet still awesome. Right when she arrives into the town, she's, she's attacked by these kids who are a, a street thug gang. And she, within an instant, beats the crap out of all of them. Without using anything than just, like, her fists, I'm assuming. The animation was like, wow. The kids are all like bowing down and begging for her forgiveness. She gives it, so she's a really cool person about that too. She's like, I can't say no to a person who's like bowing and begging for forgiveness. I can't say no to that. And then the leader of this little group immediately gets attacked and beat up by his older sister. The older sister turns out to be a girl named uh, Mako who is sitting next to uh, Ryuko in her classroom. Mako is not really the brightest of all the students, but she's very enthusiastic. Anyway, they're walking at school, and uh, the president's uh, student body president comes by, and everyone in the school like Nazi bows towards her because apparently this is the Third Reich. All except for Ryuko, who rushes up to her, opens up this case that she's been carrying on her back, and pulls out a giant sword that's actually one half of a pair of scissors. She points it at the president and is like, "You're the one in charge of." in charge here, and because you look surprised when I pulled this out, you know something about where the other half might be. She rushes up to the student body president and immediately gets punched so hard right in the face by the leader of the boxing club, who's wearing a two-star Goku uniform. A big giant fight happens, but the thing is, the majority of the fight, almost none of it is in Ryuko's favor. She gets beat, like, she gets beat to shit. She manages to escape though, she hijacks this delivery guy who's delivering food's uh, little scooter and she goes taking off and he's like, what about my deliveries? And she comes back immediately and just drops the delivery on the floor and then drives off again. Which literally got me like dying when I saw that, I'm like, dear god, that was great. She goes back to, I guess what is the wreckage of her former home where her and her dad had lived when she was younger because there was a picture. And uh, 
there's like short flashes that show images like her dad on the floor with the scissors in his back, uh, a person jumping away with another pair, another half of the scissors, and basically what I'm assuming now is that she is out to get revenge on the person who killed her dad. Uh, so, and the only way she knows how to find the person is to look for the person who has the other half of the scissors. However, all of a sudden the floor beneath her goes chink, and she goes falling down in. And badass teacher alert! Her teacher's this chill looking guy. He looks. This might just be me saying this, but he looks as if Kamina had longer hair and wore like Jim Morrison glasses and everything. And he obviously knows a lot more than Ryuko knows because he knows about this secret trap door at the bottom of her house. She falls and gets uh, one of her wounds reopened and blood falls down into the rocks and underneath all the rubble, out jumps this insane uniform. Yes, uniform, as in piece of clothing. And she freaks out, she's like, oh my god, it's a talking sailor uniform. And the sailor uniform's got like eyes and everything, and it's like trying to strip her down so that it can put itself on her. Think If you can think of the terror mask, from uh, Splatterhouse, it's very much akin to that. It's bloodthirsty, it's forcing itself onto people, and it's gonna give her incredible strength. So it manages to get itself on her, and then they're about the committee is about to execute Mako, who is hung upside down over a boily pit, and her big concern is, oh no, my skirt's falling up, or falling up. She's upside down, skirts. And she's like, oh no! And uh, even one of the committee members is like, that's her big concern? <laughs> but anyway, Ryuko comes in and she just challenges the boxer guy. She saves Mako in a very hilarious scene because she's like holding Mako to the side like this sideways. And Mako's just stiff body the whole time. She challenges the boxer guy and they have this match where the boxer's glove actually breaks on the uniform. Heads up, this is a very, very revealing uniform. Very revealing uniform. And then, Yuko proceeds to beat the crap out of the boxer and sends him flying. She tears up his suit in a strand, like from Kirby's Epic Yarn, comes out of his suit and goes into hers. I was assuming it was, I was thinking it was going to give her a little bit more clothing, but it, it didn't from what I saw. And then she sends him flying towards the others, and once he hits the wall of like people that jump in front of the president, he, I guess, dies because blood splatters and all that, and a tiny bit of blood gets on the president, and everyone loses their shit. But she calls the whole thing off, and that's about where the episode ended. The animation aspect of this was really cool, but it also had... Ch it was also really choppy. It wasn't smooth, unless you were seeing a fighting scene or whatnot. It was very choppy, very jumping around and whatnot, which actually worked really, really well. It made the comedic scenes really fast and funny, and it made the action parts really stand out, at least. The music was cool, too. There was a really cool theme playing during the fight between her and the boxing uh, club leader. And the voice acting was also really cool, too. Ryuko's voice actress, she keeps this kind of, like, monotonish, uh, kind of voice, but it still feels alive. It really feels like this is an actual, this is the actual voice of the character, and that's actually really cool. So yes, this gets a huge recommendation from me, especially if you liked stuff like Guren Lagan, because it is very, very, very much the same type of stuff. And the best way I can describe it is what I had said originally. It's like if Scott Pilgrim met with uh, Guren Lagan and they had a baby that was a magical girl anime. So yeah, it's a very, re really, really awesome concept, and I'm really behind this, and I'm going to be continuing this series probably all the way through, and I hope it's going to be a pretty decent run. So yeah, that's it for this one. Uh, Golden Time is the next anime I'm going to be taking a look at in about 30 minutes or so, so until then, peace out.